Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to track changes in your data. We're going to create a table to log any changes in your data made by your users and create a history of those changes. Today's lesson comes from Allison in Tennessee. Allison asks, I've got a few different users who work with my database. Is there a way I can track what information they change? Well, yes, Allison, I recommend you use something called a change log, where we basically set up a table that will track whatever information you want to change. You can track whole records or just individual fields. Let me show you the simplest way to do this. Let's say we've got a simple database here with customers. And I want to track a change. Anytime someone changes anything in here, I want to save it, save this entire record into a backup table. So first, let's create a backup table. We're going to take our customer table and I'm going to copy and paste it. Control C, copy, Control V, paste. All right, let's call this customer change log T. And we're only gonna copy the structure. We don't need all the data that's already in there. It's an empty table. Now, every time there's a change made to the customer table on the, in the form, I wanna copy that information, just append the record, append the record, append the record into this change log. We gotta make one change in here. I'm gonna actually make two changes. Let's go to design view. First of all, customer ID is an auto number. Now, if we want to copy the whole record, that auto number, we can only have one of these in the change log. So I'm going to change that to a normal number, just a regular number. All right, I've typed long integer. That way I can add more than one copy of each customer ID, for example. You want a whole history. The next thing I'm going to do, I'd like to see it, like what date and time it was changed. So I'm going to add a field in here. Let's insert a row. And I'm going to put in here change date time, and we'll make that a date time field, and the default value equals now. So I've got a record of exactly when that record was changed. All right, that's my customer change log T. Let's save that, close it down. All right, now in this form, whenever this record is changed, I want to save a copy of what was there to the customer change log. Now, unfortunately, this is something you will need a little tiny bit of VB and SQL for. I tried doing it with just a normal append query and it doesn't work. But it's a real simple solution. Follow with me. Let's go into design view for our customer form. Let's bring up the properties for the form and let's find the before update event. Now, usually I do a lot with after update because after update lets you do stuff after you've made your changes and the data has been written to the table. But before update happens, when you're done making your changes, before the records are committed to the table. And that lets you do things like maybe check the data that was entered and cancel the event if you want to. Or you could do something like this, where we can save that information before it's committed to the table. All right, so click the dot, dot, dot button over here. You may get a window up next asking you what kind of builder you want. Pick the code builder. I had that turned off on my system. All right, so right here, we're in the form before update. We're gonna put in a little bit of code. Now we're gonna run an SQL statement. So it's gonna be do command dot run SQL. And what is the SQL statement? Well, we're basically creating an append query. We're gonna append data into the backup table that we just created, the customer change log. And yes, I checked to see if we could do this without SQL by just making a regular append query and it really, you can't really do it that way. So here we're going to go insert into customer change log T select star from customer T and then we need a where condition. So I'm going to continue this line down here on the next line where customer ID equals customer ID, just like that. So this is the SQL equivalent of an append query. If you don't know much about append queries, I've got uh, a video on that. I'll put a link in the description below. Also, if you don't know SQL, I've got videos, tons of videos on SQL. It's, it's, it's very handy to learn SQL to, just to do simple things like this from inside your code. Plus, you don't have to have 10,000 different queries in your database to do lots of little stuff. You can just write one line of code like that. All right, so let's close that. And let's go back to our database here. Let's close this form. Save changes, yes. Let's open it up. And I'll change myself here from Ricky to Richard. 
All right, now if I move off this record or close the form, that event will run. Let's check our table. There it is. There's the old data. All right, it's got the date and time in there. It's got Ricky, which was the old data. And of course, the new data is Richard, and that's stored in the table. If I come back here and change it next after this and put my middle name in there, all right? Now if I move to the next record, okay. I just got an error and I decided to leave this in the video for you. What happened was it says one record due to key violations. All right. I'll hit okay. And then what's happening is I'll bet you I know what I forgot to do. All right. Yep. Right here. Customer ID. I changed it to a number, but I forgot to take the key off. I forgot to take the primary key off. You see, I should have done that before. I'll say no. And that will reset this. So this is no longer the primary key. Let's turn the key off here too. There. This table really doesn't need a key field because this is just backup stuff. We're not doing anything really with this table. We're not relating it anywhere else. This is just so we have a log of what was changed. Now that I made that change, I should be able to come in here and put in here. Let's just put Dennis in and move to the next record. Okay, there we go. Good. Okay, and now it's saving all my changes. Yeah, I forgot a step earlier when we were working on this table. And I, I said to myself, should I go back and re-record that part of the video or just leave it in there? No, I'm going to leave it in there. That way you can see the error too. I make, I make mistakes myself. I've been working with Access for almost 30 years. And I still make little goofs like that too, especially when I'm recording videos because I forget to, to do stuff. It's like when, you, when you're shooting hoops and you can make them every time and then you say, hey, watch this. And you're trying to show off. Well, and then you, you mess it up. Well, when I'm recording videos, sometimes I forget steps as I'm going along. All right, go to a different record here, James Kirk. Let's put in here Jim. All right, either move to the next record or close this form or whatever you do. And now the old data, James Kirk, is in there. So this will tell you at least, okay, here's, it was customer two was changed on this time and date. Now tracking which one of your users made that change is a whole different ball game because Access does not have by default uh, user level security. It used to in the old versions. You used to be able to set up a logon and a password and give each one of your users a logon ID and you could actually track that information. But now in the newer versions of Access, Microsoft got rid of that. You can add back in your own and I do cover that in my Access security seminar. I show you how to make your own logons and stuff and you can track what users made changes. But unless you go through, that's a lot of code. Unless you go through that with your own logon, there's really no easy way to do that. The simplest thing would just be on your main menu here to put like a combo box and have them pick who's using the database and they'll just be on their honor at that point. But that is how you set up that change log table. And you'd have to do one of these for each one of your tables that you want to track if you want to save all that information. Want to learn more? There is an extended cut version of this video available for silver members and up. In that video, I will show you how to track deletions. So if someone deletes a customer, you'll see what was deleted. We'll create our own log table and a log function that you can put anywhere in your database. You can track specific fields if you don't want to track an entire table. So for example, if they change the customer's credit limit, you can track what the old credit limit was and what the new one was set to. We'll track if they access specific areas of your database. So if they click on the contacts button, for example, it'll say, hey, accessed contact info. And then we'll set up real simple user tracking where on the main menu, for example, we'll have the user select who they are for basic logon purposes so we can track that in the database. Yes, it's an honor system, but without going through a lot of work to fully secure the database, this is the best you can do. How do you become a member? Well, you click on that join button down below the video. You'll see a list of all my perks, silver members and up, get access to all my extended cut tech help videos, plus lots of other stuff. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep being free. I'm going to keep making them as long as you keep watching them. Make sure you like and share my video if you enjoyed it. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that little bell to get notified anytime I upload one of these free tech help videos. For more information and links to other lessons just like this one, click on the show more button down below the description there and you'll see all kinds of other links to different resources. If you have not yet tried my free three hour long access level one class yes it's three hours long go to my website or find it on my youtube channel if you like level one then level two is just one dollar and that is also free for members want to see your question answered in a video like this one well visit my tech help page thanks for watching and we'll see you next time